Hey guys, welcome to Action Reaction. So make sure to subscribe and like to my channel. Tons of content here in my channel. TV show trailers, YouTube videos, movie trailers, game trailers, try not to laugh challenges, gaming compilation videos, regular uploads. You can even ask me for what to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely subscribe and stick to my channel. You'll see a lot of content. So let's get to the reactions. Let's go. Martian Manhunter, DC Space Ranger. The Silver Surfer, Marvel sitting on the space in the background. The depths of space hold secrets beyond our comprehension. But these sage superheroes have seen more of it than any of us could ever hope to. He's wearing a And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> For as long as mankind has looked upon the night sky, the stars have beckoned the brave to search the unknown and explore its endless wonders. Like Dr. Solardell, who's kind of a doctor in the same way Dr. Pepper is a doctor. This guy's got no formal education, but that didn't stop him from messing around with some ancient tech he stumbled upon. He was desperate to live out his boyhood dreams of exploring the cosmos. So with the tech's advanced capabilities, Erdell created a machine that would bring the cosmos to him. He pointed the machine at home, pushed the button, and hoped for the best. And yes, yes. Erdell saw a new real life version right before his very eyes. No remember kids, when in doubt, just push buttons, never fail. The mysterious and powerful alien known as John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, immediately started using his incredible powers in front of the doctor, like mind reading and shape shifting. Which was just the tip of Erdell's discovery. Turns out, Martians have complete control over their bodies and can transform into practically anything, like a freaking dragon, an exact to me, a Wonder Woman down to her central woman system, or even a totally generic green monster that's not steady. They can also shoot lasers from their eyes, fire psionic blasts, turn invisible, and phase through anything, even green lantern constructs and force fields that Superman couldn't get through. On top of all that, they've got a crazy healing factor. John has been generated back from a single limb, tiny pieces, or even a bottle of goo. This display of awe inspiring power overwhelmed Dr. Erdell more human heart and caused him to die in the Martian's arms. Damn! Well, at least he accomplished his goal before he bit the red dust, right? Anyway, John used his shape-shifting abilities to hide amongst his new world by assuming the identity of a recently deceased detective named John Jones! God, what a crazy coincidence! Comic book writer! Detective John Jones lived a double life on Earth for many years, solving cases and helping as many people as he could but eventually, he stepped out, revealing himself to the world, and helped found the Justice League of America. And John definitely holds his own in the supergroup. He once was my fight alongside Wonder Woman and Superman, who has stated that of all the beings in the known universe, he would be afraid to fight John. And he said, Superman would be the first Kryptonian John has gone toe to toe with his manhandled Ultraman, who's basically evil Superman from the Earth universe, and Superboy Prime, who can shatter reality with his punches, and is also evil Superman from the Earth universe. He took a land from Asmodel, the King Angel from a literal army of heaven. He's held his own against Darkseid, the manifestation of tyranny in the DC universe. And he's fast enough to catch up to Supergirl and Superman, who we know flies so fast he can burst the bonds of infinity. So basically, he's just as strong and just as fast as a bunch of crazy gods and demons. While Jean's strength and speed are obviously very impressive, it's also no secret that his greatest asset is his mind. He's one of the yeah, most powerful telepaths in like all of the DC universe. He can also shut them down all together. Like and he, all together. And he once yeah. made Mr. Mixel Mixel Mixiglass. Mr. Mix Pickles. Fuck your name. Whatever. Anyway.
anyway, he got him! him. The surprise is that he's not saying backwards, but God only knows because I can't say it forwards, which gives him his power. His psychic defenses are strong enough to protect the Justice League against a worldwide telepathic attack, and his ability to sense people's feelings is so strong, he can feel every sentient being in the entire galaxy. And he once out thought Perpetua from the Omniverse. Who's that, you ask? Oh, just a freaking creator of the entire multiverse. She's basically the god of everything. Jean needed to connect his consciousness with everyone on Earth before Perpetua could catch up. He pulled this off by using his mental abilities within the span of blank time. Literally the smallest possible measurement of time. In the time it takes you to count to one, Jean could count to one and fly across the universe and back over 216 times. Batman has said that in order to kill Jean for good, you would have to literally destroy every single atom in his body one by one. so much, I'd say we change this guy's name to Martian God Hunter or something. He's basically invincible, right? I'm not quite. Jean is not I so he has a very real vulnerability to fire. Like, at times, he has to be able to go longer as a quick way to lose his control of Spawn. And not just literal fire either. Jean was flinched trick into just thinking he was surrounded by fire. And that was enough for him. Even still, Jean has been able to overcome this feat. He's got to use his fire abilities and even take hits from fire attacks. Which leads me to believe the weakness of Jean's cellular cause of real physical harm is mainly psychosomatic. What are you doing? I heard what you said. Weakness to fire is just in your head. I'm feeling it, guys. Another win in the mind column for sure. And to think there's a whole plan of these guys out there. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. Before Dr. Odell's strange experiment, Jean's own brother used the Martian's telepathic connection to each other against him, and the entire planet was plagued with Ron Mir's sparks. As long as they stayed telepathically connected, every Martian was vulnerable to a mental fire that would overwhelm them and burn them from the inside out, which sadly worked very well, because the fear of fire is something Jean shares with his fellow Martians. Centuries earlier, the Guardians of the Universe, a group of mortal aliens who run the Green Lantern Corps, feared that the Martian race could become too strong. So they programmed the Martians with that genetic weakness to fire. Jean was able to survive the fiery curse by cutting up his fellow people, including his family. Unfortunately, his wife, Lyria, and their daughter couldn't live with the isolation, and he had no choice but to watch them give in and burn alive. Life racked with grief and survivor guilt, Jean was left to wander his homeworld all alone. His only solace being shape shifting into his lost loved ones to convince himself they were still alive. Oh my god! Jesus, John! That's so sad! That pain has undoubtedly shaped who Jean is. In fact, the trauma he held on to so tightly formed a literal spiritual connection with those lost souls. A telepathic connection so strong, it kept them from finding peace in an afterlife. Let me say that again. His grief and telepathy were so strong, he prevented an entire race of people from moving on to the afterlife. It wasn't until years later that John could return to Mars and release those souls by finally letting go. And not to forget them, but to embrace his new life and his new home. A place he would defend time and time again to make sure the Earth never suffers a fate similar to Mars. To experience all of that, to truly know what it feels like to be alone in the vast universe, but continue to use your wisdom and power to help those is what makes the Martian Manhunter and doing an actual story. He on a planet that so with other incredible heroes, John really has set himself apart. He's risen through the ashes and emerged the heart and soul of the Justice League. A virtual utopia, free from any and all crime, poverty, and disease. And hope to Norrin Rand, which I've got to say is the sickest, most radical name I have ever heard in my entire life. 
entire life. <laughs> he was a brave kid who was raised, raised to live a life of reason and intellect over one of gnarly adventures. That is, until the technologically advanced society came under threat from the devourer of the world. So Norrin struck him a deal with the world muncher. In exchange for sparing his planet, Mr. Red offered to leave his home behind, decode the Lactus' peril, and seek out new planets for him to start down. And once the Lactus agreed to the deal, he imbued his new herald with the power cosmic, transforming him into the Silver Surfer. An equally tubular name, Duper Doom. The power cosmic grants the Surfer near unlimited energy, as well as matter manipulation, phasing, super strength, speed, and invulnerability, just to name a few. The Surfer's basically got all of Galactus' space magic just on a smaller scale, and Galactus uses that power to fight guys like the Inbetweener, an abstract being from the outer space. The Surfer used the power cosmic to serve Galactus diligently for nearly a hundred years, during which he ensured that the planets consumed were devoid of sentient life. That is, until the server accidentally offered up a planet with life, which drove him crazy with guilt. You see that? That is already a much better movie than before. Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. I like that movie. It's probably the best Fantastic Four movie by the And it worked for a while, until the server better if somebody Galactus' mighty mind manipulation was wasn't enough to bury the Surfer's true nature for good. With the help of Alicia Masters and the Fantastic Four, the Surfer turned against his overlord and saved the Earth from being eaten. But even after all that, Galactus just let the Surfer keep his power. At any point, he could have just taken him back. Being the source of the Surfer's powers, yes, he could. But Galactus has continued to let the Surfer have the power cosmic out of respect for his first herald. Damn. See, that's the kind of respect I'm asking from you. Anyway, ever since those mental gymnastics with Galactus, the surfer made sure nothing like that would ever happen again. And he's been successful. Like when Psycho Man failed to trick the surfer with his illusions. Or when he was briefly trapped in the Supreme Intelligence's mind when it was using the Mind Stone. With some of those mental threats behind him, he could finally take to the spaceways, kick ass, and monologue about the meaning of life in the universe. All of which he's quite good at, especially that last one. It's thanks to the abilities afforded to him through all that cosmic energy. It's seriously crazy. He can rearrange the models Anything he wants him to, anything he wants. He can force you to just feel pain in general, and he can even control elements, not just earth, wind, and fire, but anything in a boogie wonderland like gravity and the weather. He's got enough power and energy inside him that he once created an infinite star to serve as a new light source in a universe of the void. So just when he needed it, he was able to pop out a baby son. That's the can't forget about the sick Spreads the stars with. This thing's basically an extension of itself. He can transform it into a sweet sword or into pure cosmic energy. And if it breaks, he can just form a new one. On his board, the surfer has traveled at incalculable speeds on multiple occasions. He can fly faster than Thor and even what so fast he reached the future. Even without his board, he was creating some shackles that would zap away his power within the next nanosecond. Nightly Bride, he wants out surfed a wave of universal destruction. Yeah, you surf out of all of existence as it was being torn apart. Now, uh, I've seen some choice waves, man, yeah, but if you ask me, that's one too, but that's for watching on the beach, man, the friends. You're, uh, hitting it real hard with all this surfing lingo. He's honestly not that kind of guy at all. Righteously disagree with you, dude. You are carving up my brain waves into an off-brain swell that I just can't feel. I'm waxed, man, waxed. The Silver Surfer is a tragic man who is always waving the like we set out to destroy the new host of the Star Brand, an energy source that grants his wielders virtually infinite power, capable of wiping out all life on Earth. The Star Brand seems to choose a new unknown host at random. Could be a good guy, could be the most evil person to ever exist. But despite that threat, the Surfer spared the new Star Brand once he found out she was carrying a child. He decided to bear the weight of any potential consequences on his own shoulders instead of squashing any and all hope that the child would use. Use that power for that's, good. I get it. He's a righteous dude on a surfboard. Exactly. And in the surfer's case, a keen sense of morality also comes with a keen sense of his surroundings in general. He can see enemies even when they're invisible, and can sense incoming threats to the point where he can sense someone approaching even before they've left their own home. He can also absorb energy as opponents throw at him. Anything from psionic energy to a freaking star. The surfer can even do it when he's on death's door. Hey, what do you think the door? Man on death's door says. 
Probably like, back of the dead, right? I don't... What are you talking about? Now, it does take a lot to get the serpent to death door. He's taking a blast on the infinity scene. He's surviving the infinity scene. He's crashed into the big egg. And he went back to the star. God damn. He ruined right back in that punk is dead pool. Ha! I hope you like a big ball of gas in your face, you tool. Reed Richards, the smartest man alive, has said that the surfer is probably the most powerful being in all the galaxy. And even after years spent drifting through the galaxy, uh, he's still built strong bonds, like with, with the Fantastic wow, Four, really? the Defenders, <laughs> and with people like Don Greenwood. <laughs> but somehow, he always ends up alone in space, like searching, searching, searching for answers, searching for beings that need his help, searching for something that could replace the home that he lost. All those Only to be weighed down by the guilt of his servitude and the pain of his sacrifice, which was ultimately done in vain. Because it doesn't seem to matter what the server does, Zen La is dead. Destined for destruction. At this point, his home world has been destroyed four times over. Despite it all, this tragic hero still manages to take everything in stride as he surfs the stars and fights tirelessly. All right, the combatants are set, and we run the day of one possibility. I Each 
which was very nice. So they throw vampires for almost everything they can throw at each other. They can both advance through objects, rearrange molecules, and regenerate their own bodies. But arguably the biggest thing on the Martian Manhunter's side was his formidable weapon. The surface is memories erased and his emotions manipulated by Galactus. So it would stand to reason that Jean did pose a mental threat to him. But the surfer has resisted mental attacks many times. When Psycho Man played on the surfer's guilt and pretended to be his lost love, the surfer saw it through it, and he escaped the supreme intelligence's mind when it was using the frickin' Mind Stone. These two could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe around the universe for a long time, but when it came down to it, the question was, who had the power to put the other down for good? They both have some serious healing and a comeback from power, but if ending Martian Manhunter meant destroying his every atom one by one, the surfer has the means to make that happen thanks to the seemingly endless well of energy that is the power cosmic. It's truly an overwhelming source of unlimited soul trap and outside of Galactus directing the power away from him. The surfer is never without them. It's like a battery. Even if Jean could drain all of the cosmic energy, the surfer can just recharge it, and he has used that power to destroy planets, defeat Galactus-level threats, and can basically accomplish anything with it. While both of these philosophic heroes tend to hold back out of a respect for life, there's obviously no holding back here, I and the depth of Silver it. Surfer's abilities gave him the win. This Martian <laughs> was harsh in his belly, so the Surfer had to wave goodbye. Tenacious Cowabunga and Ten Ninja Turtles. The winner is the Silver Surfer. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We have a new Death Battle release on every channel this year. And click the join button to get new perks and extra content. Play the whole numbers and see Death Battles before anyone else. What? The next one. People have been waiting for this one.